going to do some well-known scriptures and some of the stuff, you know, uh, we, we get so accustomed to reading Bible that sometimes we just overlook little words that can open a whole new dimension to us. So when you read Bible, read every word and make every word stand out. Don't be in a hurry when you read Bible. So when you have time to read, don't read sentences, read every word and let every word speak to you. Fall in love with the word. Mwah. Listen to this scripture. Seek out of the book of the Lord and read. Not one of these details of prophecy shall fail. None shall want and lack her mate in fulfillment. For the mouth of the Lord has commanded and his spirit has gathered them. Yes. So if you read the context, it says more or less, every scripture has a mate in the Bible. And if you can't find the mate, please don't preach it. But if you can find the mate, the prophecy will be fulfilled the minute you find the mate. First John 3, you know it all, but let's look at it today from another viewpoint. Verse 8, he that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. But we also know in John chapter 8, Jesus says, he's a liar from the beginning. Okay, so from the beginning, the devil is sinning, and from the beginning, the devil is a liar. So I don't want his sin, neither do I want his lies. For this purpose, this is a scripture you all have quoted somewhere. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. With emphasis on he was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. So he might destroy sin and he might destroy lies and everything that the devil can do, would do, should do, could have done anything. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. For those who never saw it, would you take your pen and take the for his seed and make that his a capital letter. And then take the next off to the colon where he says, and he cannot sin, make that a capital letter. Because he, make that a capital letter, is born of God. Okay. And this, the children of God are manifest. And the children, okay, look this way. Have, have you sinned after you got saved? Yes. Have you messed up after you got saved? Yes. Have you had to ask forgiveness after you got saved? Yes. Still the Bible says, if you're born, you can sin. Okay? So is God a liar? Because the devil is a liar from the beginning. Okay? But here he comes with a context. So let's go to First Peter chapter 1. We all know it, but I think it'll be good to have it here in this portion today. Mm. Verse 18, you must know and you must recognize that you were redeemed and ransomed from the useless, fruitless way of living that you inherited by tradition from your forefathers. Not with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Okay, let's just stop there. Let, that gets rid of all the consultation sessions, all the inner healing sessions, all the casting out of forefather spirits, all the breaking your bloodlines, all going back to your forefathers and see how you can be free from before your birth. The blood of Jesus has delivered you from anything that you could have inherited from your forefathers. But you were purchased with the precious blood. It is true that he was chosen and foreordained before the foundation of the world, but he was brought out to public. Remember our scripture that we just read. He was made manifest. Now remember what we just read. For the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. So he was made manifest in these last days for your sake. 
Okay, what was he made manifest for? To take you out of the lineage of your forefathers and put you in another genealogy, put you in another generation, make you his child. And he says, I will call them my children and they will call them my father. And we will be one great family. We got nothing to do where we're coming from. We are supposed to be born Verse 21, through him you believe in rely on God who raised him from the dead and gave him honor and glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Since by your obedience to the truth, now remember the devil was a liar from the beginning, you have purified your hearts for the sincere affection of the brethren. See that you love one another fervently from a pure heart. Now here it comes. You have been regenerated. You have been born again. Not from a mortal origin, seed, or sperm, but from one that is immortal by the ever-living and lasting word of God. King James, being born again, can you all read it out loud? The seed cannot sin. The seed is incorruptible. Oh yes, it said twice, it's immortal. Thank you. Which life are you living? Paul says, if you cannot admit that Christ is in you, you will be a, a reprobate, you will be a castaway. So, which life do you draw from? Your natural life, your natural resources, the way your flesh is thinking, or do you draw from the seed life? The seed cannot sin. So, if you want to come with deliverances and inner healing stuff and that, you are acting against the seed life, which is the word life, which is the Christ life, which is the God life, which is an incorruptible life, which is an immortal life. Which life are you promoting and which life are you opposing? We got to decide once and for all, I'm going to make a decision for Christ. The whole creation is waiting for God's sons to be manifested. When the sun Son was manifested, he destroyed the works of the devil. When are we going to be manifested and destroy the works of the devil? Not acknowledging him, not promoting him, not trying to say, well, it's the devil that's doing it. No, we are not here to see what the devil is doing in your life. We're here to see what Christ can do in your life, what the seed life can do in your life. Let's make a decision for the Lord God Almighty and let Jesus be Lord of all. Acts chapter 10. So we're going to see how this operates. Verse 36. The word. Now I'm going to say it and you're going to make a note and you're going to see it. The word there is the seed word. It's the Jesus word. It's the John 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word himself was God and everything that was made was made by him. Without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. Verse 14. And this word became flesh. In other words, God clothed himself in flesh to manifest himself because he is the unseen God unto the king, eternal, immortal, invisible. God is invisible. Jesus says, no one has ever seen the Father except the Son. No one has ever seen the Son except the Father and to whom the Son would reveal him. But Philip, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. So Jesus came to reveal an unseen God. So the God was just spirit. God is spirit, John chapter 4. God speaks a word by his spirit and creation in his form but God is not visible so no one can see God and live so the living can't see God because God is spirit so God needs to put on flesh so the word took on a flesh form and became the seed life in a little girl's womb and was born and he came out and was manifested he wasn't manifested when he was 33. He was manifested there in a manger. Then he was manifested in a room. Then he was manifested when he was dedicated in the temple. This is God manifested in flesh. Okay, now listen to this. The Word 
which God sent unto the children of Israel. You can put there John 1, 11, he came unto his own and his own received him not. Okay? The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word, that word, I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea, began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. So he's referring to Jesus. The word proclaimed, published Jesus himself. Verse 38. Scriptures that we know, but today different light. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with them. The purpose of word manifestation, I'm talking about Jesus, the Son of God. was to destroy the works of the devil. For God was with him, okay? Now God anointed very important, very important, very important. Went about doing good Healed all. So all were oppressed. Of the devil. Okay. Okay. which made you to be born again. And that seed word cannot sin. So that's why if we sin, we have an advocate. I just say, sorry Lord, I was you know, out of the seed life, so, so I don't feel guilty, I don't feel bad, I repent and I go on. Because I'm not gonna stay in the flesh because the flesh is actually crucified so I'm just jumping back into the seed life, okay? But today, Mark 16, 16, we all know it. As from verse 14, Jesus starts, he rebuked them first of all for the hardness of their heart and their unbelief. Then he said to them, go and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. We know that. And to them that believe, not to them you minister to, to them that believe, these signs shall follow. So the signs doesn't follow your congregation because you preach to them. The signs follow because you believe. Okay? So these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name. Come on, can you say point number one? They shall do what? They shall do what? Okay, so the very first point for believers is to get rid of the devil. Why? For this purpose, the Son of God is manifested to destroy the works of the devil. So if there's anything evil, you right as the believer is to destroy that works, point number one. Point number two, they shall speak in other tongues. Point number three, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall take up serpents. We all know it. Verse 20 says, and they went all over preaching the word, and God confirming the word with what? Signs following. So we got to have signs and wonders following. But point number one is the devil needs to be cast out. Luke chapter 10 verse 19, we all know it. And behold, I give unto you power and authority over all the power of the These signs must follow you 
That's you, a believer. And the devil needs to be cast out. And then the rest of the signs must follow. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Now creation is waiting for you to be manifested. Are we going to manifest or are we going to postpone? Are we going to wait for something to fall out of the sky? That, need, that, that needed to come from the sky came 2,000 years ago. Jesus already manifested. So let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. Now we're talking about for this purpose the Son of God was manifested. Now the manifestation here is to destroy the works of the devil. And I want to say it, I think it's because we put the devil in the wrong place that we don't see the fullness of manifestations. But if we got him in his rightful place, manifestations will be so easy. Miracles will just be like every day. It'll be so easy to get the cripples to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear, sinners to be saved, and your finances to come in. It's so easy if you just put the devil in his place. And today, we're going to put the devil in his place. But above the devil in his place, we're going to put the Lord Jesus Christ in his place. And if we have that, you will automatically be in your place. And if you are automatically in your place, and you know the seed word life is in you, then it's not difficult to live the God life. Verse 16, without controversy, just King James, great is the mystery of godliness. So we've got to understand it's a great mystery. It's not something lying around on the surface. It's a great mystery. God was manifested. Now listen, this is the third scripture we read on manifest. God was manifest in the flesh. He's not going to be, he was. God was manifest. Jesus came 2,000 years ago. Justified in the spirit, seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Now let's go to Luke chapter 2 and see how God was manifested in flesh and how he was seen of angels. What has that got to do with the anointing? What has that got to do with destroying the works of the devil? What's that got to do with putting me in victory out of old stuff, in the new stuff, where total authority will be mine, and I will see stuff that no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, has never covered by the heart of man. It's time to see the greater things. Jesus promised from now on, not in 2,000 years, from now on you'll see greater things. So church, it's time to see the greater things. John 14, 12, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these. Now people try and converse theologically about the greater works. Brother, maybe it's more works. Maybe it's because the church is bigger, and maybe the miracles. No, no, brother, he said greater. And if he said greater, he's not a liar. Then we're going to do greater works. And if we want to see greater things, it's time for the church to step into it, or are we just going to wait for somebody to come out or are we going to be the greater doers? Okay. Luke chapter 2. So we're going to put a few things straight by the grace and the mercies of God and through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Verse 4, Joseph went up to Gal- from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth. Remember Jesus of Nazareth? Into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. To be taxed with Mary... Is his spouse wife being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Now verse 9, listen. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You shall find the baby 
wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, good world toward men. Born this day. Angel said, I want to bring you the news that there is born this day. Verse 15. And it came to pass. It came to pass. As the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing which is come <laughs> to pass. which the Lord has made known unto us. <laughs> Verse 16. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Come to pass, Savior, Christ the Lord, born today. Hmm? And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen and was told them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus. When was his name called Jesus? When the child was now eight days old. To fulfill a lot of prophecies that we're going to read now, but in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, when the angel appeared, he said, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Eight days after his birth, Jesus. Okay? Which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Yes. On the eighth day of the little child's life, prophecy you will not die till you have seen the Lord's Christ for this purpose the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil this day is born unto you the Savior which is Christ the Lord eight days Jesus this I have seen the Christ I have seen the Lord's Christ eight days this day of birth. Mm. And he came by the Holy Spirit into the temple. When the parents brought the child Jesus to him to do after the custom, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. This day is born to say, eight days. The child, Jesus.
I have seen the Lord's Christ. For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest, to destroy the works of the devil. Great is this mystery of godliness. God was revealed in the flesh, seen of angels. And wow, glory Whew, to God in the highest. Ha! This day is born. The Savior, Christ the Lord. Peace on earth, good world to men. Eight days, God has given me a prophecy. I will not die till I've seen the Lord's Christ. Oh, Jesus. Let's call him Jesus. This is the Savior. Now my eyes have seen the Lord's salvation. Now my eyes have seen the Lord's Christ. I can now die Isaiah 11 then we're going to go back and forth and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall go out of his roots now for those who are making notes, you can do like Psalm 2 and Psalm 110, the most important two Psalms in this whole prophecy, and then a lot of scriptures in the different prophets, but Psalm 2 and Psalm 110 is the two most important where he said, uh, your throne, O Lord, is forever. Okay, and I can give you 12, 13 scriptures about this. your throne. Unto the sun, he says, your throne is forever. Unto the sun, your throne, O Lord, your throne is forever. And your seed shall sit on the throne forever. Solomon didn't sit on the throne forever. David never sat on the throne. Jesus on the throne of David. But we don't know Christ after the flesh, so we don't have the Davidic lineage, we have the godly lineage. Then he says in those Psalms and in other related scriptures, he shall rule, important rule, with a rod. Okay? About the prophecy of Jesus that will have a throne that will be established forever. Listen close. A throne established forever. Rule with a rod. A throne forever. Rule with a rod. Prophecy about prophecy upon prophecy about the Lord Jesus. There shall come forth a rod. Out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch. A branch, just the word Naza, insignificant. To fulfill the prophecy of Jesus of Nazareth. Okay? A branch meaning Naza, which means insignificant. Shall grow out. Verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. One. Spirit of wisdom, two. Spirit of understanding, three. Spirit of counsel, four. Spirit of might, five. Spirit of knowledge, six. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord, seven. False spirit of God, which is at the throne of God, Revelation chapter five and Habakkuk chapter two. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge. Now, now listen to verse four. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod, of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. You can read Isaiah 59. Okay, verse 9 says, For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Now we have a says the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Okay, now verse 15. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over dry shot. And there shall be a highway. Yeah. 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 Come on. There's waters in Egypt. 
that has a tongue, that has streams, that has rivers, that has a sea. But when the rod comes forth of the branch of Jesse, he will cut that flood, that tongue, that river, that sea off, and then there shall be a highway. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight his paths, shouts Don, John the Baptist, because there's one coming here after me. So let's prepare the way. And then Jesus come and he made the ways straight. Hmm? He made the crooked, not John. John said, let's prepare it because the one is coming, if you want to read the prophet, that he will do it. Come on, Isaiah 35, there shall be a highway. And none shall err on there, even the weak shall not stumble there. There shall be no ravenous wolves on this highway. There shall be no lions and adders. Because the Son of Man come to destroy the works of the devil. To give you a highway that nothing will be able to swallow you up. But that you will be able to walk in freedom and liberty. And if you find a lion and a scorpion and adder, you will just trample on it. Because I give you power and authority over all the power of the devil. But how do I get the power? So let's pick the story up and read it in context by starting at Isaiah 7. Verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay. When? When she conceived. The virgin shall conceive, and she shall call him Emmanuel. You shall call him Jesus. Simeon came and said, this is Jesus. Now we have seen the Christ. Now we have seen salvation. Now it has come to pass. This is the sign. A baby. Eight days later, a little child is fulfilled. For before the child shall know to refuse evil and to choose the good, the land shall abhorrest, that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. We know we had King Herod, and we know Judah was just taken over by Assyria. So the king of Assyria actually became the king of Judah. The Lord shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house days that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. You can make your own study. It's Verse 18. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost part of the rivers of Egypt. Chapter 9. Verse 6. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, government shall be upon his shoulder his name 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 how many shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace the increase of his government peace there shall be no end upon the throne of david upon his kingdom to order to establish with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever from the minute the child is born until the government is upon his shoulders henceforth even forever he is Verse 8, just to confirm it, the Lord sent a word in Jacob. For those that want to read the Nativity story, that scripture is used in the Nativity story. The Lord sent a word into Jacob. So let's do the Matthew 2 Nativity story. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, in the days of Herod, Behold wise men, for those who never heard me say it, not idiots. From the east came to Jerusalem asking. Now verse 2 is the important one for today's study. Where is he who has been born king? Please underline it. Now we have the Savior, Christ, the Lord, Emmanuel, Wonderful, counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, everlasting father. Now add it at the birth. Where is he that has been born king? (laughs) 
So we have all this plus we have the born king. For we have seen his star. So Herod the king, verse 3. When he heard this, was disturbed and troubled in the whole of Jerusalem with him. So he called together all the chief priests and the learned men and the people anxiously asked him where Christ was to be born. Yes. They replied in Bethlehem, as the prophet said, verse 6, in Bethlehem, out of you, Judah, shall come a ruler who will govern and a shepherd, your rod and your staff. Then Herod sent for the wise men to secretly and accurately point out when the appearing of the star was. When was it made visible? Okay, we're going to jump. Verse 9, and uh, the star came and stood over the place where the child was. They brought to him gold, frankincense, and myrrh for those who don't know gold for the king, frankincense for the priest, and myrrh for the sacrifice. Okay, verse 12, receiving the answer uh, in a dream, they were warned not to go back to Herod. Now from verse 13. Now after they had gone, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up, take unto you the young child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. Remain there. Till I tell you, for Herod intends to search for the child in order to destroy him. And having risen, he took the child and his mother by night and withdrew to Egypt and remained there until Herod's death. For the historians, just put there in your Bible, 4 AD. Before the child could discern between good and evil, the two kings picked up trouble. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet out of Egypt have I called my son a little baby what has it got to do with 1 John 3, 8 and Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how God anointed and now all the works of the devil. How, what does this got to do? You're just in there. Then Herod, when he realized that he had been misled by the wise man, was furiously enraged. And he sent and put to death all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that territory who were two years old and under. Reckoning according to the date which he had investigated diligently. So this guy didn't want to take a chance. So he killed all the babies under the age of two. But he died 4 AD. But the young child Jesus already fled to Egypt with his mother and Joseph. To fulfill that the son will come out of Egypt. To fulfill, I will cut off the tongue of the Egyptian sea. I will stop the floods of Egypt, the rivers of Egypt. And then I will come back and I will come as a rod out of the stem of Jesse, the branch. And I will go, the branch, Nazar, I will go stay in Nazareth. So that the name Jesus of Nazareth will have meaning according to everything that we talk about right here, right now. Verse 19, but when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, now go back. Hmm? Verse 22, but because he heard that Oculus was ruling over Judea in the place of his father, Herod, was afraid to go there and being divinely warned in a dream, he withdrew to the region of Galilee and he went and dwelt in a town called Nazareth. So that was spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called Nazarene, a branch. Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, behold a great red dragon. (laughs) Having seven heads and 10 horns, seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. And the dragon 
stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. The woman is ready to bring forth the child. The dragon says, if this child comes out, we better kill him. When this child came out, it was a man child. For unto us a child is born, a son is given. The government, oh, can you just make assumptions? Oh, he's the one that will rule nations with a rod. There's no other prophecy about nobody else. Okay, just keep that. And immediately he was caught up to the throne. Where is he that's just been born king? <laughs> and the woman fled. Okay, just stop. Take the woman and the child and flee to Egypt. Which country on earth is bigger desert than inhabitants? Egypt. Where's the pyramids? In the wilderness. And the woman fled. Take the woman and the child and flee. Where to? Where shall I bring my son from? And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Okay, can I read the Amplified? Three and a half years. The woman fled to the desert. A place was prepared for her in the desert for three and a half years. When did Herod die? 4 AD. When did he take the child? When he was a young child. Before he could discern. So it couldn't have been older than a year because then they start discerning. Then they start saying, "Uh uh-uh. Give me. Okay. Thank you. Okay, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. When? When the child was born and the dragon tried to kill it and the woman had to flee in the wilderness, then there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Stop. Don't read. So war broke out. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. And the dragon and his angels could not prevail. And their place was found in heaven no more. When? When the child was born. So if it is true, then since Christ came out of the womb, devil has got no right because the son was immediately caught up to the throne. And the devil was cast out to the earth. In other words, access has been denied him okay? since the birth. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying, in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the 
the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. My eyes have now seen the salvation. This day is born the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now, if you read the next four chapters, you'll see he's jumping to and fro in Revelation. So we deliberately jump over and they overcame him by the blood. And you'll see then it's continuous present and future tense. Okay? But if we go to verse 13, we're back at verse 10. And when the dragon saw, he was cast unto the earth. He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And the women were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into a place where she is nourished for a time. They were back at verse 6. For three and a half years. Now listen to this. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. And the earth help the woman, the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon caused out of his mouth. Did you just see Isaiah 11? Who did that? The child. The young child that could not yet discern. Before the child could discern, he will cut off the tongue of the Egyptian sea. He will stop the floods of the Egyptian rivers. He will stop the floods. The young child that cannot discern, the baby Jesus. Yeah, what a Christmas. What a Christmas. Hmm? Luke chapter 10. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even devils are subject unto us through your name. And he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So you don't have to study, you don't have to find out, you don't have to go to Genesis 1 and 2 in the middle of creation and two creations between Genesis 1 and 2 to find out when he felt that is it. Behold, I give unto you power and to tread on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you because you seated together, dressed up together, raised together. Notwithstanding in this rejoice, not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hid these things from the wise and the prudent and has revealed them unto babies. Even so far, it seemed your good sight and your sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father. No man know who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and to whom the Son will reveal him. Then he turned him to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you, many prophets and kings have desired to see the things which you see, and they have not seen them, to hear the things which you hear, and they have not heard them. What things? Hey, boys. I don't think the people heard, but just this come. I actually saw him fall out. He's got no place there. So you actually must know that he's been stripped. You have all authority and all, but if you want to sit with the devil that one day will be called, cast out strong, you're going to struggle with the authority thing. But since the day I was born, That guy has got no more place. 
Peter, James, John, Thaddeus, Matthew, they all filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, bras, pariria, la mos, pariria, la reiki, bere, bene, no, 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 padre, fili, spiriti, santo, no, bolela, la manda, lela. Okay, it's filled. So they come to the gate called Beautiful, and there's this man since birth. Peter says, Sovereign God, have we none? We just had an offering at Spirit Word. But such as we have, <laughs> such as we have, give we unto you. Now listen. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I've got a series of teachings there on Jesus of Nazareth. But just listen to this today. According to our teaching. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. So Peter says, I want to bring every prophecy that I've shared with you here this morning into the name. Because for those that believe in my name, they shall cast out demons. Okay, to those that believe, full stop, in my name they shall cast out demons. Let's change it. To those that believe in my name, full stop, they shall cast out demons. Okay, so Peter said, sovereign gold have I none. But such as I have in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In other words, I'm pulling all the prophecies of devil's defeat, the branch, the rod, the Egypt thing, call my son out of Egypt, the swallowing. I bring all those prophecies right now to you. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, everlasting father, Emmanuel, the sign, the king is born. All those prophecies in one word, the branch, Naza, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Wow. Wow. Rise up and walk. People stood. <sighs> They're amazed, bewildered, bewildered. Peter says, Why do you look at us as though through our power or holiness we have made this man to walk? But let it be known to the whole house of Israel that faith in his name, his name has made this man whole. Hmm? The chief priests, the Pharisees, are now really upset. So they catch them, they ask them the question, by what power, by what authority, by what name have you made this man? And they said, let it be known now to you that the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the one that you crucified, God has raised him from the dead. And now his name has made this man whole. Jesus of Nazareth, bringing all the prophecies. They got them together and said, now we forbid you to speak in this name again. Because this name, we immediately take back to what happened with Herod, what happened in Pilate's court, what happened in the crucifixion. That's the night we want to get out of our memory. Okay? So go, don't use So here the apostles, John and Peter, join the rest. They say, hey, brothers, bad news. We've got to pray. So what are we going to pray? Mm, Well, uh, if we think of all we said and all the prophecies, the only thing we can do is let's take Psalm 2 and recite it as a prayer. Oh, Lord, why did the heathen rage? The nations imagine a vain thing. Well, did the kings of the earth stood up against the anointed. But now they quote it, they quote words in that's not in Psalm 2. It says, well, did Herod and Pontius Pilate stood up against the anointed. The two that had the problem with the king. Herod said, if this is the king, we got to kill him. Pilate says, are you the king? He said, Did you say it out of yourself or did somebody tell it about you? For this purpose came I into the world. Yes, I am the king. For this purpose, I was born king. Now you announce me king. He said, this afternoon I came into the city and they shouted, blessed is the king, fulfilling all the prophecies of Zechariah 3 to 10. 
Your king shall come riding in on a donkey. O oh Lord, well did the heathen rage. And we quoted Herod. So there's Matthew 2. There is Revelation 12. When they quoted Pilate, there's the crucifixion. And there's the overcoming by the blood of the Lamb of Revelation 12. So, and it says, uh, give unto your servants. Are you ready? And this is where this whole teaching started. Boldness to speak your word. So that signs, wonders, listen, miracles, and healings be done. Are you ready? In the name of your In the name of your holy child, Jesus. And when they prayed, the place was shaken. Because they just called all the prophecies into that room. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Spoke the word with boldness. Verse 33. And with great power, the apostles gave witness of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Unto us a child is born, son is given, government upon his shoulders.